the most important things you will need when living off grid. Hey there, this is Matthew. I'm one of the account executives here at Discount Lots. And today I want to talk to you about some of the things that you're going to need when you're living off grid. If you don't know who Discount Lots is, we aim to assist and help people buy land, making it easy and affordable. We'll talk more about that later. So let's get straight to that video. So a lot of people associate living off grid with being like a really relaxed lifestyle. Uh, there's not a lot of noise. There's not a lot of people or anything like that. While that is the case, sometimes it's not like a hundred percent like that especially in the beginning so there's going to be some things that you're going to have to work on you know to set up that off-grid living lifestyle a successful life off-grid starts with that right piece of property you want to make sure that that land you buy offers the right foundation zoning does it have food in the area um, the climate's right uh, and the size that you're looking for it fits you and your needs. Number two is gonna be the shelter that you live in while living off grid. Is it gonna be in a tiny home, RV, a cabin, a trailer? Um, are you gonna do some glamping? Are you gonna do a container home? There's a bunch of different ways to live off grid. There's a bunch of different structures that you can use to live off grid. But you wanna have this narrowed down before you start living off grid. The next thing is gonna be your options for electricity. Most off grid properties, are not going to be anywhere near any electric poles that's just a given so you're going to have to consider some options that are going to help you get electricity out there so most common way to live off grid right now is going to be with solar power that's bar none the best way to live off grid as of right now now if you live in a windy area then probably you know wind energy is going to be the best way to do it uh, but solar power is probably the best way to do it right now they do have battery operated, you know, uh, devices uh, that are short term, you know, work well for you. They do have uh, solar powered appliances as well that short term work pretty well as well. But that's not a long term thing. And the other, you know, old school way of powering things is going to be with your gas. In my opinion, the best one right now is going to be solar power energy. It's easy. You don't need somebody to really hook it up for you. They make it super easy now so that you can do it yourself. They even sell solar powered uh, generators. And that's probably one of the hotter things that's out right now for off grid living. The next thing on this list is that you're going to make sure you have a dependable source of water. So not every off-grid location is going to offer the same source of water. Depending on what your off-grid living situation is, you're going to have to juggle the options. If you live near a body of water, like a lake, a river, or you know whatever it is, you can probably get that as a source of water, but you're going to want to make sure it's clean. You're going to want to make sure it's not polluted, you know, or anything like that. If it does have something, you want to make sure you have a way of filtering it as well. The other option that you can use is rain. Um, there's a lot of rain catchment systems out right now that a lot of off-grid people use, but you're going to have to make sure that wherever you are, it rains enough for that. And the other and last option is probably going to be the more expensive way, but it's pretty dependable as well. And that's going to be with digging a well. So a lot of people do this. It's obviously not the cheapest way to go, but it's very dependable. The next thing you need to know is how you're going to source your food, how you're going to stock up on food, uh, how much food do you need? So living off grid, we've talked about this a bunch. Most people do farming uh, to grow their own food, but that's not gonna be a day one source of food for you. You're gonna to have to stock up on things because your, your crops aren't gonna be ready day one. So make sure that you stock up on some foods, some canned foods, when you start living that off-grid lifestyle. Make sure that you have a plan as soon as you get to that off-grid living way that you can start growing your food, raising your animals, um, fishing, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that there's a plan for that because food is probably going to be one of the more vital parts of living off grid. Moving on to the next one, it's going to be emergency supplies. Because living off grid tends to be uh, very far out from civilization, you're usually 30 minutes to an hour at least away from a hospital. So you want to make sure that you are safe and you can handle most of the first aid situations while living off grid. This means getting a first aid kit, you want to have bandages, you want to have just typical supplies, medicine, uh, uh, you know, um, water that you always have on hand just in case of an emergency. This also means things like emergency, you know, signals like flares. This means uh, radio. This means lights. Uh, anything that you would need in case of an emergency, a bunker, uh, I don't know what it is. Make sure that you have all these supplies 
ready to go. And the last thing on this list is probably gonna be a little bit more of a nasty one, but that's getting a reliable and safe waste and disposable system. Dealing with waste is a requirement. A lot of people tend to overthink this and all they think about off-grid living is food, water, uh, emergency supplies, and shelter. They always tend to forget how you're gonna get rid of your waste. Learn how to install a septic system. It's not that hard. There's a lot of easy ways to do it nowadays. So just make sure you do your studying on that. You can't just grab your waste, fill it in a hole, and think that that's gonna be okay. You can't just poop in a bucket and dump it anywhere. Um, make sure you have a reliable way of getting rid of waste. I know that there's a lot to think about when living off grid and we might have made it a little scary for you, but at the end of the day, living off grid is super enjoyable. And the best part about this is that there's a million different ways to do it. So I gave you all the necessities that you're gonna have to think about. And that's the beauty of it. You have a million different choices on how to get all those things done and taken care of. It's up to you how you wanna live off grid. Just make sure that you cater to all your specific needs, whether it be just for you, your loved one, or your family, whatever it is, there's a million different ways to do it. And it's best that you think it through before you start living off grid. You don't wanna start living off grid and start coming up with a plan while doing it. It can get very difficult. So just start thinking about it before you head out there. So that's it for today's video. If you liked what you saw, make sure you click on that like button. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave it below. Make sure you subscribe to the page and click on that bell notification because we have a ton of more videos like this one coming out throughout the coming weeks. If you don't own any land and you like the idea of it or you just wanna buy land in general, make sure you head to discountlots.com. We have a whole ton of properties. I always say it and I'll say it again, if you have $301, you can buy land with us today. No credit, background, or even income checks. Everybody qualifies to buy land with us. So head out to discountlots.com and we'll definitely help you. We make the land buying experience pretty easy and affordable. So that's it for today's video, guys. I'll see you on the next one.